quarters, I'd say. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be, this is your best friend in the world, Dr. C. From the Department of Criminal Justice, Southern New Hampshire University Global. And let's say I have a, not a special guest, let's just say <laughs> I've got a very special friend, colleague, and brother yes. that I want to bring on board today, Mr. Leonard Bell who works here at SNU. Leonard, please introduce yourself to the viewing audience. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Leonard Bell. Like I said, Jeff and I, we're more than just um, colleagues. We're like brothers in arms and- uh, Bandmates. Bandmates, yeah, we, <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot that. We also had a band together, the SNU Jam Band, and we love the, you know, part of our getaway, I guess, from the day-to-day, -day, the mundane of uh, just life and working. We enjoy music and uh, kind of funny, Jeff and I, <laughs> we kind of enjoy some of the same music almost, you know, we love that Motown sound. Yeah. Of course, the rock and roll, but Motown is uh, Jeff's heart and my heart, and we both love that. But um, we've been collaborating over the last few years just about different things as far as, um, you know, what's been going on with work and how we can best support students no matter what we go through and how we go through it. I'm retired military. I spent 20 years in the service doing that. And after service, I decided to go back to school here at SNHU to get my degrees. I got my bachelor's and my elementary ed in psych and got a master's in education here at SNU. I graduated in 14 and 15, so I know what the, the mirror of being a student's like. I've done it here at SNHU. I did it while being a parent of four children. Two just recently graduated from college, one last year, one this year. I got one to be a senior in college and one a sophomore in college. So I got my hands full. My wife is also a retired military vet, 30 years. So she did 30 years in the service and also a nurse for 30 years. So my family life is pretty much like anyone, anyone, one, anyone else's life, students are alike. So we're busy here, but we tend to make things work as far as uh, focus, staying focused, and especially during this crisis that we're going through with the um, COVID virus, that pandemic, along with the, uh, the uh, systemic racist pandemic as well. So uh, just here to encourage you to let you know that um, Jeff and I, we're going to try to do the best we can to Dr. C. <laughs> we're going to try to do the best we can to uh, ensure that you have um, uh, a lot of encouragement, a lot of inspiration to continue to be successful in what you do on your day-to-day -day as far as your, um, your degree program. So if you um, sit back and just check it out, and we'll be excited to just share some good things with you. Lady, before, I, when I came over here, and you had a actually a very, very poignant thing to say, and it was relative to distraction, effort, focus, et cetera, and how all of our students here have a, a golden opportunity to do just that. Would you kind of elaborate on that? I thought that was outstanding. Yeah, Dr. C, um, yesterday when I was outside just doing my, one of my daily walks, I stepped out of my front porch and I noticed one of my neighbors who is uh, one of the local school teachers here in, uh, in, the, in the district. She's a kindergarten teacher and um, but she also happened to be a graduate student here at Southern New Hampshire University. She's doing a master's in education with a concentration in ed leadership. And um, so as yesterday was the last day of, uh, of classes in the, in the, in the uh, district of Manchester, city district, you know, Manchester School District. And uh, I asked her what was keeping her mind off of some of the things that we we're going through, not just with um, them trying to go back to school and figure out what they're going to do as far as sizing of classrooms, which is it's all in the air right now. And I asked her as well as with the uh, her, her husband's a, uh, uh, a fire department. Um, works for the local fire department. He's pretty busy, going a lot. So I asked her, uh, what are some of the things she's, she's doing to keep her mind off of some of the unrest that we're having? And uh, excuse us for the plane going over, but we, <laughs> we live over in an uh, airstrip. But um, she did state that uh, because of her education and, and, and staying focused on her, 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 her degree and her program, that has kept her mind at ease and kept her at peace. And she understands that, you know, all the work that she has to put into school and going back to school uh, to get her master's uh, is cumbersome, but it's also rewarding because at the end of the day, she knows she'll have that as a, as a, as a tool to help her not just advance in her career role, but also put a little bit more money in her pocket. Uh, but during this time period, she says education has helped her stay focused at hand on what she needed to do to complete her degree. So uh, I wanted to share that with uh, Dr. C this morning because I thought that was very pointed to this conversation that we're having today. Lenny, I'm probably the best. What's, um, we have a very, very, we have a great population of students, a great, very diverse population of students, okay? And 
I, I know that I'm very, very proud to work for the university because from the present on down, we're trying to stay ahead of this. We're trying to stay on top of it. We're trying to emphasize the value of an education relative to, you know, great critical thinking, problem solving. We're really all about that. Um, so what would your message be, you know, to our diverse student population? What would your message be to the, our minority students as they try to make sense of what's happening while they're holding down a job and taking care of their family, focusing on their education, et cetera? And what's your message to them? My, my message, Dr. C, would be to all the students here at SNHU, especially those minority students, is to um, try to understand everything that's going on now and not to try to do anything other than be yourself but also within being yourself, figure out what actions I need to take in a positive light to help move the dial forward. And that's meaning um, we do have all these things that are happening in our personal lives. And now it's hit a global, you know, hitting a global pand you know, the pandemic is global in both sides of it. And to sit and to really think about what you're doing, like we talked about the critical thinking aspect of it. If you critically think about what as a as a student perspective what can i do to ensure that i can continue to walk down the walk that i'm doing uh with all of these distractions around us but figure out what it is that you can do and stay focused stay positive um because in the end um i'm telling you it's going to pay off you have uh if you're in a household with family members you're not just doing that education for them and you got to remember i mean for yourself you're doing it for them as well so um just just think about how you structure your day. Think about how you can be uh, positive to the ones in your in your uh, in your household, uh, and show them that you know the perseverance of all of this stuff that's happening. You still can persevere and get through your education, but you really have to think about the things that you got to do to get there. And sometimes it's, it's a lot of pre-planning has to take place. And, uh, and I understand how difficult it is. I mean, we all are trying to figure out how we, you know, get through this critical time in society. But I think just taking a step back, you know, do some exercises, some deep breathing exercises. I take tend to take 10,000 steps a day and walk around my neighborhood uh, to, to clear my head a little bit so I can think about how I can best assist students that need me throughout the day. I'm a career advisor here at SNHU, so part of my job is to ensure that students that are, you know, soon to graduate are preparing for that transition over to the workforce is to give them the tools and resources they need. And I need to be sharp. I need to be able to think critically in the things that I need to do to help students like you to be successful. So um, I think, you know, with the leadership that we have, Dr. C and uh, President LeBlanc and others here, we all want to see that students be successful, um, not just our minority students, but all, but the focus right now is on our minority students because of disparities that's happening across the globe. So um, we'll do the best we can. I'm going to do the best I can to ensure that uh, I can do the work to ensure that you are successful uh, throughout your program, whether it's in the middle, the beginning, or the end. Um, and I think Dr. C's message is the same. And with that said, Let's get to work. Let's get to work. <laughs> <laughs>